So I'm in the process of repairing a battery backup, and I thought it might be handy to make this video for other people as well. There are some safety risks and hazards in doing this. It's technically not recommended. Why? Eh. M my opinion is probably differs from what reality is, but uh, yeah. And this is a APC Backups NS1350. Part number BN1350G. It's kind of a prosumer battery backup. And a lot of times when these things stop working, it's because the batteries have died. And to get to the batteries, you have to remove this cover, which I'll put back on here. What you'll do is you'll put your hands kind of around the battery backup, like over it. And I like to put my thumbs on the little indentations here for the release. You know, just kind of push down, and as you're pushing down, push away from you as well. And then once you get past these locking tabs, you can just kind of slide it off. These batteries come taped together with these labels, and you will want to be somewhat mindful of the orientation of the labels. It doesn't necessarily matter, but it's just good to put them on the right way. Because the, if you have it with the red pull tabs pointing up, then the batteries are disconnected from the battery backup. So to replace the batteries on these, you'll need to remove the labels. I do recommend saving these just because they're nice to have. The adhesive on them is kind of gnarly, so you'll have to pull on them pretty hard. But um, yeah, that's not the end of the world. One thing I do recommend is that you have some packing tape on hand if you do this. You don't necessarily have to tape these back together, but it does make them easier to manage. Because without this tape, oh man, come on. There we go. There's nothing to hold these batteries together and those sit, flop around loose like this. So it does make it easier to manage if you uh, tape them together. Now, one thing you'll have to be very careful of when you're removing these is watch out for like cracks or leaks. These are a sealed lead acid battery, but when they fail, they tend to crack open, usually around the edges. Sometimes you'll see these vent caps pop off. And that's just due to the fact that they get hot. Um, and they tend to puff up if they're put under a heavy load. Now this setup here, I believe, is 24 volts. These are uh, in series. And you want to be careful not to lose the orientation of the wires. Because you don't want to accidentally short something out or send the wrong voltage to the batteries. So, after you take them out, you want to be very cognizant of where the wires were. And as you'll see, they colored the ends with heat shrink for what the polarity is, but not the wires since this is going from black to red. And yeah, I don't really have much of a choice there, unless you want to make your own special half black, half red wires. These batteries are 12 volt, 7 amp hour batteries with the F2 terminals. They're fairly common. I personally like to buy mine from Batteries Plus Bulbs. I've been buying these Duracell batteries. I've had good luck with them in my own personal stuff. I've bought other lesser brands on uh, Amazon and they've just been junk. So. I won't do that anymore. I learned my lesson. So yeah, I've already hooked up, as you can see, the other side. Red to red, black to black. And now we gotta do this side. And when you hook these up, there shouldn't be any sparks or arcs. If there's any sparks or arcs, you did something wrong. <laughs> and uh, probably should disconnect them really quick before something bad happens. The tricky part is, getting the wires in a position where they kind of work nice. So you'll kind of have to work with that, get them lined up. And 
since the adhesive on the labels has uh, failed, you're going to have some issues taping these together. Let's see here. You want to avoid um, these nubs, so you want your tape to go between the nubs. And it doesn't look like that's going to be very easy to do with the packing tape. So what I'm probably going to do is tape over it the best I can. And then I'm going to use, actually, let's see here. Yeah, so this is the tricky part about fixing these yourself. They're not really meant to be fixed like this, so you have to figure out how to get them back together. What I think I'm going to do... So this isn't going to be a permanent solution. This is just going to get them started. You can't tape over these sides like this permanently because the uh, contacts and stuff have to go through there. I guess you could, though, just cut this little opening out on both sides. That might not be a bad idea. I will admit I haven't done a lot of these, so... Um, yeah, normally the labels go off. So what I think I'm actually going to do here is improvise on the fly. Ideally, I would poke this out with a razor blade. I don't think I have one in here, though. I'll use my beloved safety scissors. See if there's enough tape there. Yeah, it still holds up pretty well. This one I'm not gonna be able to cut out though, because I need to cut outside of that. But uh, I forgot the orientation. Let's see. So the side with no contact, which is this hole right here that I just opened up, is the side I need this label pointing towards. Then I think so take a piece of tape, go over the top, like that. And what you're going to see here is this tape's kind of binding up over these little, little uh, ridges. So I'm just going to take my scissors, kind of pierce through that so I can flatten it out around there. And it's no longer a high point. We're going to do the same on this end. There we go. And that's just to help hold the batteries in place. Now, yep, that's the sign that goes in for. Uh, well, put that on the wrong way. <laughs> uh, nuts. Well, I guess the uh, pull tabs aren't going to line up right now. Yeah, I got that backwards. It's okay, though. We'll just fix it. Luckily, since this is packing tape and it's going on plastic, it's easy to remove. There we go. Now, this isn't a perfect solution, but these batteries cost me $45 after tax. And I'm fairly certain I would not be able to buy this battery pack for that much from APC directly. Let's see here. Let's uh, fix this. There we go. 
Now it's going to be pointing the right way. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't have cut that. So, I'm just going to move this. Clearly, doing that was not a good way to uh, make that hold. Oops. There we go. surgery on this tape so it'll sit nice and flat. And now I can remove these temporary parts of the tape. Oops. Uh, oh well. So it's not pretty, but it should be good enough to do the job. So now what we need to do, hmm, it's on, is uh, drop this down in the battery backup. And hopefully if everything's wired correctly, nothing bad will happen. So the battery backup is now plugged in. Just take this down off my stand. And it's the first time to turn on. Which button's power button? Looks like it's a little one. There we have it. Online is blinking, not sure what that means. It might be, uh, oh yeah, it's charging the batteries. Um, batteries aren't probably fully charged quite yet. But beforehand, this wasn't even turning on at all because the other batteries were hosed. I don't know if it's made a run time. I don't know if these show battery health or not. I forget. Nope. 60 hertz. But yeah, <laughs> that wasn't the best video, but at least I'll give you an idea of the process of replacing the batteries for these more prosumer battery backups. And now I will have a working battery backup for my personal office, since uh, right now the server rooms are the only machines that have battery backups. <laughs> but either way, hopefully that was interesting, and thanks for watching.